Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister, Minister for Finance, Economic Development and the Youth Economy, and Minister for Justice and National Security of St. Lucia. Honorable Claudius Francis, Speaker of the House of Assembly, Ministers of Government, other parliamentarians, Cabinet Secretary, Permanent Secretaries, Mrs. Crisita Descartes Pelius, Commissioner of Police of the Commissioner of Police for the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Deputy Commissioner of Police, Mr. Ronald Phillip, Executive Members, Gazette Officers, Administrative Officer, Representatives of TH Motors and Marines, Representative for Yamaha, all the members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, all the government officials, members of the media, well wishers, good morning. I am Aniel Innocent, Acting Inspector of Police and Mistress of Ceremonies for this morning handing over ceremony. It is with great pleasure that I stand before you to participate in the handing over ceremony of one of the largest collection of motor vehicles to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Today, the organization will receive eight pickups, 10 motorcycles, five ATVs, a coaster, four jet skis to add to its fleet. I now invite Dr. Mashama Sidi, Assistant Commissioner of Police, to officially welcome all guests to this morning's handing over ceremony. Honorable Philip, JPA, Prime Minister, Minister for Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy, and Minister for Justice and National Security of St. Lucia, Honorable Claudius Francis, Speaker of the House of Assembly, Ministers of Government, other parliamentarians, Cabinet Secretary, Permanent Secretaries, Mrs. Crisita Descartes Pelius, Commissioner of Police, Mr. Ronald Phillip, Deputy Commissioner of Police, executive members, gazetted officers, and other officers. Representative of TM Motors, representative for Yamaha, other members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, other government officials, members of the media, invited guests. Good morning. It is indeed a pleasure to welcome each and every one of you here today to two events. The first would be the graduation ceremony for the ATV and motorcycle course. And so today we will witness the participants receive their certificates having increased their knowledge in the skills in ATV and motorcycle riding. The courses took place at the Bexhall playing field from the 27th of May to the 30th of May, 2024. Congratulations to the participants. Can we give them a round of applause? Our second event is an auspicious occasion because not only did our officers receive training, but today is the handing over ceremony of eight vehicles, five ATVs, 10 motorcycles, four jet skis, and a coaster to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. To whom much is given, much is expected, and so as the keepers and guardians of the new assets given to us, the users are responsible to ensure that excellent care is taken of these assets to, that are provided because they are to be utilized to assist us in our quest to improve our crime fighting, policing, traffic management, and sea operations. To Mr. Yoshaika Keto, and I hope I pronounced your name correctly, or Yoshaiki Keto, it is indeed an honor to have such an experienced, successful facilitator and cyclist share his knowledge and experience with us and our officers. Dumo arigoto gozaimasu. Once again, welcome and have an enjoyable and safe day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sidi. And I now invite Commissioner of Police, Mistress Crusita Descart Pelius, to deliver her remarks to the ceremony. Honorable Philip G. Pierre, Prime Minister, Minister for Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy, and Minister for Justice and National Security of St. Lucia. Honorable Claudius Francis, Speaker of the House of Assembly, Ministers of Government, other parliamentarians, Cabinet Secretary, Permanent Secretaries, 
Deputy Commissioner of Police, Mr. Rod, Pelly, Mr. Rod Phillip, Executive Members, Guided Officers, Representative of TM Motors, and Representative of Yamaha, other members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, other government officials, members of the media, well-wishers, a pleasant good morning to you. It's indeed a great pleasure for me to be here this morning to be saying a few words at the closing ceremony of the motorcycle course and the handing over of these motorcycles and other um, vehicles which are much needed in such a time like this and we will ensure that they are put in good use. Roy H. Williams, an American author, said, and I quote, training is not an expense, but an investment in human capital, end of quote. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force remains committed to ensuring that our officers are provided with the necessary training required to perform their duties, in fact, should I say our duties, effectively, in order to deliver professional service to the people of St. Lucia. Our vision speaks to improved road safety and a safe environment for all people in St. Lucia. The equipment, vehicles provided by the government of St. Lucia today will enable us as an organization to be one step closer to this realization. During this week, the past week, sorry, I am hoping that you, the participants, had, had discussion and that you delved in the expertise of the facilitators as you tap into the wealth of their knowledge during the sessions, during your training. Today, you have ended four days of extensive training which has equipped you with the skills to effectively maneuver motorcycles and ATVs, which will complement the existing fleet of vehicles in the organization. Some of the objectives of the training were to ensure that you could effectively handle these motorcycles and ATVs, their speed, power, to develop skills which would allow you to put out Maneuver those, to outmaneuver those who wish to evade the law and to effectively handle the equipment in dangerous conditions such as extreme weather, adverse road conditions, to name a few. This will undoubtedly reduce the incidence of collusion, damages, and other defects to the human errors. Let me express sincere gratitude to all those who, in one way or the other, contributed to making this training a reality. Let me congratulate you, the officers, for your participation in the training. A resounding round of applause to you. I want to express sincere gratitude to the representative from Yamaha, TM Motors, the executive of the Royal Central Police Force, the facilitators who delivered the training, Mr. Cherry who ensured that all was in place from the purchase to the delivery of these motorcycles, ATVs and jet skis, the Honorable Prime Minister and the Cabinet of Ministers, thank you so much for the handing over of these vehicles today. The much anticipated jet skis will enable the officers of the police marine unit to conduct patrols in secluded reefy and shallow areas, to recover persons in distress, and to access areas which the current fleet of vessels cannot navigate. Profound gratitude again to the Honorable Prime Minister for all that you are going to hand over to us today. The vehicles, motorcycles, and ATVs will assist us as we continue to address the issues 
and challenges we face in dealing with crime and violence in this country. I must admit that we have seen the various areas where assistance has been given to us, not only by means of transportation, but in capacity building where much needed leadership training is given to all levels in the organization, especially middle managers and senior managers. This ensures that our officers receive the necessary assistance in developing the strategic plan for the organization, which in turn enables us to clearly define our objectives and to help us ultimately achieve our goals. We have received assistance in other areas, such as the increase of overall manpower of the organization, the construction of a new Northern Division headquarters and a much needed custody suites. We have seen an increase in technology by way of the availability of drones, additional closed circuit television in the streets of St. Lucia, and so much more that cannot be spoken of today. And of course, I'm looking forward to more. This enables us to perform our duties efficiently through crime reduction, regaining of public trust, increased citizen security and safety, and the prosecution of the perpetrators of crime. We see these fruits in our recoveries of firearms, increased patrols and operations, traffic management, increased community policing endeavors, and overall increased efficiency. Let me encourage you, our officers, to continue the good work. The job is challenging, but we shall overcome. Remain steadfast and committed to the cause. Deliver a professional service with excellence and execute your duties always within the ambits of the law. To the people of St. Lucia, I say thank you for your continued support. Together, we can make our streets safer and make our country a better place. Let me remind you officers to maintain and take good care of the vehicles which will be handed over to us today. These are the tools we need to perform our duties. And remember that for us to be productive, we have to remain committed to the cause and the job that we do. Congratulations once again to the officers who will be receiving their certificates today. Let me remind you that whatever you have learned today, you could pass on to your colleagues. Whilst you are very fortunate to have been given the opportunity to be trained and to be given the motorcycles to use, there are officers sometimes who, ask, who learn on the job how to use the tools that they have been given. But let you put what you've learned into good use and ensure that you can pass on to the colleagues that you work with. Congratulations once again, and thank you very much, Honorable Prime Minister. You have remained committed to the cause. You've always res you always respond. We look forward to your continued support. Once again, I thank you. God bless everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Commissioner of Police, and may you be heard by everyone seated here today. And to move right along with the ceremony, I now call on the representative for TH Motors and Yamaha, Mr. Kuchani Cherry and Mr. Jose Komachia, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, <laughs> um, to give some brief remarks. Good morning, everyone. Honorable Philippe Joseph Pierre, Prime Minister of San Lucia and Minister for Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy, and Minister for Justice and National Security of San Lucia. Honorable Claudius Francis, Speaker of the House of Assembly, Ministers of Government, other parliamentarians, Cabinet Secretary, Permanent Secretaries, Ms. Crujita de Carvelieu, Commissioner of Police, Royal San Lucia Police Force, Mr. Ronald Philippe, Deputy Commissioner of Police, Executive Members, Gasseted Officers, Administrative Officer of the Royal, Royal San Lucia Police Force, Representative of TH Motors, other government officials, 
other members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, members of the media, well-wishers. First and foremost, congratulations to everyone on completing the Yamaha Riding Academy and getting our products delivered for this important event. My name is Jose Ormechea. I'm manager of the Corporate Planning Division at Yamaha Motor Distribution Latin America. On behalf of Yamaha Motor, I would sincerely appreciate you giving us such a wonderful opportunity. We are proud to be able to contribute on the great success delivering these products to the police force. Yamaha has a long relationship with Continental Marine Center Incorporated, and this time we are glad that Continental Marine set up this new leadership, dealership, TH Motor. You see, 3S is one of the most important policies that Yamaha has created. 3S stands for sales, service, and spare parts. Of course, the sales of the units, it's very important, but it is more important how much added value we can provide to our customers through the 3S's activities, including service and spare parts. This after-sales activities is what creates a trusting relationship with our customers. As Continental Marine has provided these 3S to the market for a long time, we are truly confident that TH Motors can work hard on this policy and take care of you for a long time. In closing, we expect to strengthen relationships among Yamaha, TH Motors, and the San Lucia government from now on, and would like to contribute to the sustainable growth of San Lucia. Thank you very much. Good morning to all. Honorable Philip Joseph Pierre, Prime Minister of San Lucia, and Minister for Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy, Minister for Justice and National Security of San Lucia. Honorable Claudius Francis, Speaker of the House of Assembly, Ministers of Government, other parliamentarians, Cabinet Secretary, Permanent Secretary, Mistress Cresita Descatpelius, Commissioner of the Royal Senusha Police Force, Mr. Ronald Philip, Deputy Commissioner of the Royal Senusha Police Force, Executive Members, Gazetted Officers, Administrative Officers of the Royal Senusha Police Force, the Managing Director of TH Motors, Mr. Terry Telamo, the representatives of Yamaha, other government officials, other members of the Royal San Lucia Police Force, members of the public, good morning. The journey at arriving here today has been a long and tedious one. First of all, I would like to thank somebody who is not present, and that's Mr. Evaristo Jamari. When Yamaha first started these negotiations, a uh, police sergeant at the traffic department, Mr. Lansico, approached us and wanted to know whether we had more updated motorcycles, bigger and even faster than the 700cc that they presently had. I tried on several occasions to get to the Honorable Prime Minister, but to no avail. But for Mr. Jamari, the discussion started. And I want to say thank you to Mr. Jamari. Persons who are here do not know the effort that this gentleman put in in making this, what we see here, a reality. I would like you to give him a resounding round of applause. I would also like to say thank you to the Honorable Prime Minister for placing confidence in TH Motors, a company which took over the former dealership of Yamaha on Island and being months old and putting that level of trust and confidence in us to deliver on time. Honorable Prime Minister, thank you. I would also like to say thank you to a gentleman who seated right in the back, who, through his efforts, probably none of these items would have been lined up here today, they would still be in customs. I'd like to say thank you to Mr. Kossi Jean Frederick, who is the Assistant Controller of Customs, who had faith when I went to him to ensure all this equipment was out so that they could be assembled and be here today. I want to say thank you to Mr. Ronald Phillip, and I would like to say something here today. This gentleman, when I first went to him, despite me and him not being the best of friends, but he took the bull by the horn. He showed initiative. When I said to him that 
we came to him concerning the equipment from the, for the police. First thing he said to me, how soon can you be here? And within 24 hours, our managing director had flown in from Matnik and he had every single member of the executive of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force seated in a conference room for negotiations to start. And I want to say thank you to him. Today, we are here with this equipment. But sorry that even the commissioner omitted and the mistress of ceremonies. But also coming along that, we have also provided 70 life jackets for the Marine unit. We are also providing alongside the ATVs, the motorcycles and jet skis, safety apparel. And when I say safety apparel, there are helmets. For the motorcycle, there is a two-way communication system which extends to two kilometers. So while police are doing escorts, they could speak to one another. Um, there are tablets also for each motorcycle is equipped with a tablet. So they could stop you on the, and log on to whatever portal government has and check their boots, their gloves, their shoes. And TH Motors, we are delighted and we are pleased to work alongside the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and by extension the government of St. Lucia to ensure that our security personnel have all the necessary, the necessary apparatus needed to ensure that the best is first and foremost provided for the citizens of St. Lucia and secondly, our visitors who come to our shows. Moving along, I would like to implore the Honorable Prime Minister that he probably has to spend some more money for the traffic department, and I will say why. At present, what exists from a Yamaha standpoint in terms of riding apparel is, I want to use the correct term, eh? it's not road worthy. So we are hoping in some discussions upcoming soon that we will present something which has elbow guards, knee guards, chest guards, which are needed for the police on these motorcycles. These motorcycles and all of the equipment you see here is 2024 match production for Yamaha. So it's top of the line and state of the art. And state of the art, sorry. I would like to say to the participants who participated in the Yamaha training under the tutelage of Mr. Kito, I know for each of the sessions or each of the each of the trainings, the two days was rather intense. I want to say to you, not speaking as Yamaha, but as a civilian, go out there and represent not yourselves, the police force, and by extension, the government of Lucia. Ride with care. Carry yourselves with honor and dignity. And if you, as ambassadors, do that, the prime minister, the Royal Senusha police force and its executive, will be held up there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was indeed an honor to partner with TH Motors and Yamaha to get these much needed resources to the organization. Thank you, Government of St. Lucia and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. And now, moving on to the presentation of certificates, I call on the Yamaha representative, Mr. Yoshiaki Keto, to do the presentation. Officer Giseline Fiddler. Mr. Burton Sherbin. <laughs> Officer Glenn Ferdinand. Officer Gael Henry. <laughs> Officer Jeff Bernardin. <laughs> Officer Ter Terry Shelley. <laughs> Officer Erin Fedrick.
Officer Miguel Lansico, who's not here today. Officer Brian Fraser. Officer Sylvester Frederick. Some officers I'll be calling twice because they participated in two different workshops. Officer Burton Sherbin. <laughs> Officer Anthony Laffey. Officer Kendall Bika. <laughs> Officer Clement Alexander. Officer Chanel Jules. <laughs> Officer Lester Bruce. Officer Leslie George. <laughs> Officer Percy Emmanuel. Officer Elijah Vijay. <laughs> Officer Marcus Jean-Pierre. Officer Michael Monsuz. Thank you, Mr. Kito. Thank you and congratulations to all police officers. May the knowledge attained during this training keep you safe while carrying out your daily functions. And with these additional, um, additional resources, please bear in mind that it comes with additional responsibilities. So whatever you do, please ensure that it is in keeping with the mission and vision of the Royal Senate Police Force. <clears throat> I now call on Mr. Terry Tillamo to hand over the keys for the motor vehicles to the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Mr. Prime Minister and Mr. Thierry Tillamo of TM Motors. Thank you, Mr. Kato. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, Tillamo and Mr. Prime Minister, whilst we're at it, I now invite you to the podium to give your address. What did I do with them? First of all, let me apologize for being late. I didn't have a motorcycle to take me up here. Not lucky like my other colleagues that have motorcycles taking them everywhere. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me recognize the members of, of the cabinet, the Speaker of the House, the Commissioner of, Commissioner of Police, the Deputy Commissioner of Police. And let me say publicly again, he's not my godson. 
Senator Addison Jean, and other member, members, representatives from Yamaha, members of the police service, good morning. Let me, first of all, tell you how pleased I am to be here this morning for that handover ceremony of 28 vehicles. I understand there's a new word around town now called replacement. And the fact is, we are getting new vehicles, and I don't know what replacement means, but it's the first time since I've been in politics and I've been there for a long time that the police have got, at one time, 28 new vehicles. <clears throat> and it also is the first time, and that one is really replacement, that we are replacing the custody suites that was destroyed. <clears throat> this is really replacement, replacing the custody suites that was destroyed and left the police the issue and the problems of having to carry, uh, having to carry suspects all over the country. And, and it's a fact that sometimes there was no place to put these suspects and they had to be released. So I want to tell you very soon, probably by the end of next month, we shall be opening, we shall be replacing, and that's true, the custody suites with a brand new facility for the police to be able to house suspects. And we also are going to be building and opening by the end of this year, probably by the end of next year, a brand new Northern headquarters. And that also is a replacement. Because from 2016, the police ought to have had new headquarters. And for some reason or the other, they were not, they were not built. And that national, the Northern headquarters, is a facility that's going to be one of the most modern facilities in the region for our police officers. It's going to be one of the most modern facilities. It's going to be an administrative block, and the dormitories, the contract has gone out for, for the dormitories. And we're going to be spending over $30 million for that construction. We're also going to be opening the drug squad unit, replacing it. I replacing it, if you want to see, because we want to house the officers who did jobs um, in, in proper quarters. And we're also going to be replacing the dogs because next week we are going to be having a new dog from the Matnik police. So I want to tell you that we are committed. We are committed to improving the welfare of the police in this country. And committed in a way because we believe that the police must transcend all political boundaries. We believe that the police will remain the police in spite of who is in government. And in spite of who is the prime minister, the police will have the duty to respect and to protect the public of St. Lucia. So it has to leave the political domain. And this Prime Minister is not going to be playing any petty politics with members of the police force. Who wants to play it? I wish them the best of luck. So I will continue to respect the police. I continue to expect the police to respect the government of the day. I expect the police to continue to do their job of protecting and serving. Not because of who is the Prime Minister, or not because of their political affiliation, but because they have a duty, and that duty means that the, citizen of, the citizens of this country, the regular man and woman, expects the police to give them the protection that they deserve and that they need. So I want to say clearly today, as we enter into the season, that this government will not engage in any petty politics with the police force will not engage with any plotting or any undermining of the police force. will not engage in any secret meetings or any secret confabs to plan because we want to have our own political agenda in this country. We will continue to give the resources that we have 
within the financial constraints to the police force so they can continue to provide the service. And I want to say to Mr. Sherry, if you send me the invoice, I will see if I can factor in some way the equipment for the members of the traffic department. The job of the police is getting increasingly difficult. We have to deal with cyber security. We have to deal with artificial intelligence. That's coming. That's your job. Very soon, you'll see images of things that people said, or pe pe things that people will say, but they never said. You will see all postings. You will see all false cyber, you see all false pages. This thing has just begun. And you, the police, you have a job. Together, and I want to thank the government of the United States for helping us in the cyber security problem. I want to thank them for that. Because the issues of cyber security have just begun. And in the coming season, more of it is going to be out there. So most likely, you might see me somewhere saying something like, I hate all of y'all. Get ready for it. It's coming. It's coming. You, it, it's coming because you know, the only thing is that um, when people begin, when people plan, and when people plan in, in closed spaces, the walls always have ears. So I want to tell you that you have my support. You continue to have the government's support. But there are some things that the government cannot do. The government cannot interfere with what's happening in the judiciary. We cannot tell judges what to do. We cannot tell magistrates what to do. So I know sometimes there is frustration when you go out there and you do what you have to do and you find that the people who you have arrested, you see them walking in the streets the next day. I know there is frustration, but the prime minister can do nothing about it and the prime minister can only change the laws and we have changed the laws. We have increased the penalties, we have increased the laws, we have changed the laws, and we will continue to do that. But we cannot, we cannot say to the judges or the magistrates what to do when you, they are in the courts. We cannot do it. We can't interfere we with the director of public prosecutions, and he guards his job jealously. We can't interfere. The prime minister can't instruct or this Prime Minister will not, even, will not even try to instruct the Director of Public Prosecution. Because, you know, when you try these things, you have short-term gain. You may have short-term gain, but the future, the future of the country, if there is not a clear separation of powers, if there is a, not a clear situation where the police have the authority to do what they have to do, you might have short-term gain. You might win the next general elections, but the future of the country, the future of your children and your children's children is in jeopardy. So we're not about, we're not about winning the next election. We are about winning for the people of St. Lucia. That is what we're about. Winning for the people of St. Lucia. Not about winning the next general elections. Next general elections will, de will be decided by the people of St. Lucia and nothing can change that. So our policies, our policies, are not about short-term policies for short-term gain for the, for the embellishment of, of a few. It's for the future. It's for the future of this country and for the future of the people of this country. We also want to say to members of the police force, do not get swayed. Do not get swayed by things that make you believe that you're not doing a, a good job. I have full confidence in the men and women of the Solution Police Force. I have full confidence in them. But they themselves must earn their self-respect. They must earn their respect because one bad cop, one bad cop spoils the reputation of the rest of the police. Just one bad cop. So it has to be your duty to police yourself, to ensure that corruption does not reside within your ranks. That's not been, a, what, what you call it, Saint Lucia, a suicide. It's about protecting the future of this country 
and protecting the future of the police force. That's what it's about. So you have to protect that future by ensuring that there is no corruption within your ranks. Or no corruption within your ranks. You have to ensure. Because the only way you will be able to have public confidence is if the public is certain that when a complaint is made, when information is given, that information will remain within the ranks of the police force. So you have to protect yourself. Because you're not doing it for yourself only. You're doing it for the country. You're doing it for the future of this country. And, and, and I see people gloat and say, listen to me, there have been X and Y amount of murders. As if X and Y amount of murders is something to be happy about. One murder is too much. Regardless of when it happens, one murder is too much. So we cannot gloat and say there were less murders this year and more murders next year and because of the Prime Minister, there are not murders. No Prime Minister would like to have a country where there are murders. And the problems of gang warfare and gang violence, and that we're not making an excuse. It's a fact that these issues are surrounding the entire Caribbean. Every Prime Minister complains, is worried about two things, crime and climate change. Because both of them can be devastating to our country. So the issues of, crime, of gang violence and gang warfare and guns cannot be put into a political context. We have to have a holistic response to gang warfare and gang violence and the use of guns, etc. We are going, we are continuing to try our best. I want to thank the people from Yama and Mr. Sherry for having the foresight to make the foresight to make the recommendation to us and we accept it. I want to thank them for, the, for, for, the, for their service. <clears throat> I want also to congratulate the members of the police force who have taken the, the training. We constantly believe that you have to be trained. And there have been many, and I heard the commissioner speak about it, there have been many training opportunities that have been provided, and more of them will be provided. And I hope that the right people are given the right opportunity to get the training that they deserve. Because there's a lot, there's lots of training that will become available. I was in Taiwan last Last week, I think, I've been so many places in the last two weeks, I forget where I was. <laughs> I was in Taiwan for, for, for the last, um, last week, and then I met the officials of national security in Taiwan, and they promised that there will be a lot more training available to members of the Solution Police Force, and I want to tell them to grab it with both hands. So, in conclusion, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the work that you do. I know that salary negotiations are coming very shortly. I have asked the members of the salaries, the, the negotiating team, to let's deal with that very quickly. We don't want to deal with, you know, we don't want to deal with haggling for people to try to gain political benefits or political, political points by saying we ask for X percent, we get Y percent. That's sit around the table like men and women and deal with this thing in a serious and in a realistic way. You know what the country can afford? You know what the country can afford? I can assure you that I will ensure that you get what the country can afford. You, you have my word for it. You will get what the country can afford. Not because I believe, I know you, you deserve it, but I also know what, what, what it means to be brought up on a policeman's salary. You understand? And they attacked me for that. My father was a policeman, I'm proud of that. No matter what they say, my father was a policeman and I'm proud of it. And I want to improve the conditions for the police so that the conditions under which my father operated will be much better for the current policeman. That is my vision and that's my mission. To improve the conditions of work for you, the members of the police force. So I want to thank you. I want to 
tell you very shortly, we probably will have an, a, a, another ceremony for the custody suites. And we'll always be in touch with you. We'll always see how we can improve your conditions of work. We'll always see how we can make you feel proud. Because your job is a difficult job. But it's a job that is very important. Any man or woman who can take away somebody's freedom for at least 48 hours, that's a serious job. Not many of us have that power. And when in uniform, you have that power to take somebody's freedom away from them. I don't think that you understand, some people understand how important and how serious that job is. The job of having the ability to take away somebody's freedom for at least 48 hours. That's a serious job. It's a serious responsibility. And when you wear that uniform, you're not wearing it for any prime minister. You're not wearing it for any government minister. You're not wearing it for any political party. You're wearing it as a badge of honor for yourself and for the people of this country. That's what you're waiting for. Honor and respect. Because every policeman ought to be a man and a woman of honor and a man or woman of respect. Respect for himself first and respect for the people of this country. I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Um, Honorable Prime Minister, for your commitment to the Royal Central Police Force and by extension, the people of this country. And um, before you leave, Prime Minister, I wanted you to um, present these tokens of appreciation from the Royal Solution Police Force to Mr. Yoshiaki Keto for his contribution to the training needs of the police officers and for his continued service to the Royal Solution Police Force. Mr. Yoshiaki Keto. Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister of St. Lucia and Minister for Finance, Economic Development and Youth Economy, and Minister for Justice and National Security of St. Lucia. Honorable Claudius Francis, Speaker of the House of Assembly, Ministers of Government, other parliamentarians, Cabinet Secretary, Permanent Secretaries, Mrs. Crusita Pelius, Commission of Police, all executive members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Gazetted Officers, Admin Officer, Assistant Admin Officer, her staff, representatives of TH Motors, representatives of Yamaha, other government officials, other members of the Royal St. Lucia, other members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, members of the media, well-wishers, good morning. It is, in, it is an honor and a privilege for me to express the gratitude of the men and women of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, firstly to the Almighty Father for bringing us all here today and granting us the gift of life. We want to express our profound gratitude to the Honorable Prime Minister for prioritizing the safety and security of our citizens through coordinated efforts with local and international partners, enabling us to acquire the resources necessary to enhance our policing capabilities for the benefits of both our citizens and visitors. Prime Minister, contrary to the belief of the minority, who suggests that the acquisition of replacement vehicles is insignificant in fighting crime. Mistress, with your permission, I wish to take a moment to address and correct these misconceptions. Some of these voices, unfortunately, come from, our, come from within our ranks and speak on issues of national security with a very limited understanding. Between November 2021 and June 2023, only seven motorcycles were decommissioned. Thanks to the government of St. Lucia, not only were these seven motorcycles replaced, but our fleet was increased by eight Motors, additional motorcycles. This means that we have received 15 new motorcycles, an increase of 112% over what was decommissioned. This is not merely replacement, it is a significant addition. And Mr. Cherry also told you about the technological advancement to, that, to this new fleet. During that same period, 24 vehicles were decommissioned. Since then, we have received 40 eight new vehicles, an increase of 100% over the decommissioned vehicles. Again, this is not replacement. It is a substantial addition. Today, we will also 
be receiving four jet skis. Thank you, Prime Minister, for introducing jet skis into our policing tools, providing us with greater vers versatility, simplicity, and maneuverability in our operations. This is an addition that also represents innovation. We are also receiving five additional ATVs today, which will, which will, which will enable quicker response times, better traffic maneuverability, and improved policing of mass, mass crowds. We also received a coaster for the Royal Central Police Force Band and a truck for the SSU. There's no opportune time, especially as we're in the hurricane season. In the, last 20, in the last 25 years, this is the first time that a police force has received so many resources at once. Mr. Prime Minister, it is due to your caring leadership, experience, and commitment to improving the lives of our citizens that you have allocated a significant portion of finances to ensure our continued safety. Your unmatched level of investment in the police bodes well, not only for police operations, but also for fostering a general sense of safety and security among our citizens. We extend our gratitude to TH Motors and the representatives for their collaboration in providing motorcycles tailored to our policy needs. We also want to thank the representatives of Yama for training almost 30 police officers in proper use of motorcycles, ATVs, and jet skis. We look forward to your continued support as we further strengthen our fleet of resources. A special thank you to, Ms. to Acting Inspector Ms. Angel Innocent, our Mistress of Ceremonies, the Administrative and Support Staff of the Government of St. Lucia and the Royal Central Police Force, ASP Finance, Director of Finance, Sir Mr. Imran, suppliers and other partners for your hard work and dedication in making today a reality as we strive to deliver on our premise of citizen safety and security. As the old adage goes, to whom much is given, much is expected. I urge my colleagues to ensure that we make maximum and efficient use of the resources provided to us in achieving the overall mandate of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Government of St. Lucia, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you.